Good morning. Hello everybody. Welcome to our regular Saturday catch up. Um, it's really nice to, to catch up every Saturday. I think it's a lovely thing to be able to um, see everybody. Uh, so I'm just going to wait until a couple of people come and say hello. Um, is there anybody there yet, Ames? Amy's here Not as yet. well. Hi. <laughs> Amy's here working the camera as usual. She's going to do some really fancy camera work today. Don't so. pick it up, Mum. <laughs> <laughs> we is. could all go horribly wrong. <laughs> We're going to try. We might even do some moving of tripods things today. Um, as, as usual, it's quite chaotic in this room, but we leave a little space for ourselves uh, here. So um, while, I'm, while we're waiting for people to join us, I just wanted to uh, talk about what we've been up to this week. We've been uh, busy making scrubs, um, like a lot, of, a lot of sewers are, making scrubs and oh, scrub some bags. some people coming in now. So that's what, uh, that's what we've oh, been up Sally to. Sally Camps, good morning Claire and Amy. Morning Sally. Hi Sally, nice to see you. I was just talking about making scrubs, I know you've been making scrubs as well. We're all trying to do our bit, it's really nice to, to feel that we're helping even in a small way. So, um, so what else? What else have you been making this week? Has anyone been doing uh, summer clothes, summer dresses? I've seen again lots of clothes for grandchildren. It's uh, it's been really lovely uh, seeing what's being made. Do let me know where you're where you're watching today, and uh, send me smiley faces and thumbs up that sort of thing, so I know you're there. Um, was that mum watching then? I thought my mum was watching. She, she might be. Do. She can might you be. see on that? Uh, not yet. I can't see yet. It always takes a couple of minutes to come up on my screen for some reason. Oh, so. Jane Field says hello. Hi, Jane. Hi, Jane. Jane's making scrubs. I know. We're all trying to do our bit. It's really good. It's really good. So do let me know what you've been sewing um, and uh, what you're making at the moment, what fabric you're using, all that sort of thing. It's really nice to, to keep in touch and keep connected. Um, if you're looking for something to read, I was going to talk about, I'll talk about a few things today. I've got a, a whole list to talk about, so I've written it down so I don't miss anything out. So um, I'm gonna try, and I'll try not to go too quickly. I've already been told off for doing that this morning. Linda <laughs> so, Mumby says, morning Claire. Uh, morning Linda, nice to see you. Um, so what I was going to talk about first of all is if you're looking for something to read at the moment, there's a couple of new magazines that have come out this week. Um, one is the... So today magazine. Oh, Susan Castle says hello. Hi, Sue. Nice Suzanne to see you. Suzanne Betty's here. And Suzanne from Guernsey. From That's sunny not... St. Peter Port. Oh, said. sunny there. Sunny, lovely. I think the sun's just coming out here. It is. Um, anyway, magazines. If you're looking for something to read, the So Today magazine, which came out this week, is a, is a really good one. This is the magazine that is um, made by Butterick, um, Vogue Butterick McCall's company. And you can get it through So Direct. So Wendy's uh, here. Sally Wendy. Scott's here. Oh, Suzanne is just starting two of the wrap dresses from Makers Atelier. Oh, yes, we had a discussion about that on email, didn't we, this week, so that you know where the, Hi, bits, the various bits of interfacing need to go, um, I think. And, uh, oh, Julie's here as well. See, it doesn't, just doesn't come up on my page straight away. <laughs> it's very strange. Excuse me while I just scroll, like I have to do everything <laughs> to, to try and find myself. <laughs> um, it'll come up in a sec. I'm looking at my scrub bag video, which is the one I put up yesterday. Anyway, I know, <laughs> on Facebook. Um, and, oh, morning, Jean. I can see that Jean's saying hello. Nice to see you, Jean. Dan's waving. Oh, hi, Dan, <laughs> our weekly wave. <laughs> uh, magazines, so today. Uh, this is a great magazine. It's got all the Butterick um, and Vogue and um, McCall's patterns in it. And there might be a little article in there by somebody you know uh, about working with denim. So that's that's a that's a nice one to read. It has got lots of good ideas in it, and it's got some nice summer clothes at the moment as well. So um, lots of things to to look at in there. You can subscribe to that one through the So Direct website, and when you subscribe to this magazine, you also get half price patterns from So Direct. So it's a it's a win win that magazine. The other magazine that's come out this week is the Makers Atelier magazine. Um, as you may know, I, I, I'm uh, quite good friends with Francis and we work together on a few different projects and I do write for the magazine. This magazine, um, this is quite a, a, a breakout for the Makes Atelier magazine. It's all about print and colour. So it's got lots of lovely prints and ideas for using prints with the Makes Atelier patterns. There's some uh, very nice pictures of fabrics which have come from Bloomsbury Square in there as well so um, they look very lovely you get a, um, a free pattern with this one as well for a um, for a poncho which is really nice a printed poncho and again there might be an article in there by somebody you know <laughs> about pattern matching so uh, this is a lovely magazine there's always really interesting articles in here 
um, about uh, from different di other different contributors. Uh, Grace from Beyond Measure does always does one in this magazine as well, um, and uh, yeah, it's a really great magazine and very colourful, which is nice and cheery. Suzanne Batty loves the kimono on the front. It's great, isn't it? That's the, I mean, that's the free pattern that you get with the magazine. So Wendy again, says, your article was good. Oh, thanks, <laughs> Wendy. My denim article was that. That's good. I'm still not showing. I'm just going to refresh my page because I'm not showing. I can't see my Sally Markham's here. Oh, hi, Sally. That's nice to Sarah see you. Sarah Sarad is here. Sarah. Hi, Sarah. I'm just refreshing my page so that I can see people because it's, uh, it's really nice to be able to catch up with everybody every week. Oh, there I am. Oh, I'm just going to scroll past the actual picture and just look at the comments. <laughs> so I don't get distracted. Um, what's that, Wendy? It put, um, comments only work in portrait mode. Oh, there you go. There you go. You've got to hold your phone the right way up. So, <laughs> the right way. Uh, yeah. Hi, Claire. Not sewing today. Okay. Making a three-tier red velvet cake. That sounds <gasps> nice. Oh, for an 18th birthday, lucky 18th birthday person. <laughs> mm, that's my favourite. Uh, Jilly. Only, only comment on her phone, not on her laptop. Well, that's interesting. I think technology is, yeah, it's it varies, doesn't it? From whether you're using a phone or a laptop or an iPad. But it's nice you said hello. Hi, Maggie. Nice to see you. Um, oh, yes, I think... Um, Oh, Suzanne, do you think the, the silk you bought in Singapore might be perfect? Yes, any silk will be perfect for this poncho. It's a really lovely pattern and there's, lot, there's all the instructions and everything in here as well. So it's a great magazine. It's a really nice, it's a nice feeling magazine as well. It it's really so good. colourful this it time. It is Love very it. colourful. It's beautiful. Yes. So, um, yeah, you can get this from the Makers Atelier um, uh, website. So you can either subscribe to it or you can buy it as a one-off. So that's a really great magazine. Um, so let me just see who's saying hello. It's lovely to see everybody today. I've got quite a lot of stuff on my table today because I wanted to talk to you about lots of different things. And so that's the magazines. Um, so do have a look at those because it's nice to have something sewing related to look at while we're while we're all sort of locked down at home. Um, what I want to talk to you about today? I want to talk to you about couture today. I thought we'd have a little talk about couture. Um, <gasps> Sally Ford. Sally's been buying fabric. Oh. <laughs> I think you need to share some. Yes, I think we need to know, know about your fabric. <laughs> I know, even though I've got a stash, there's no, no reason why you can't add to it. It's all about being prepared, isn't it, and having enough fabric. So uh, no reason not to buy more fabric. So we're going to talk about couture sewing today. Oh, hi, Kate. Nice to see you. Um, uh, couture, well, the, the word couture basically just means sewing uh, or dressmaking, and um, it's um, so haute couture means high sewing, uh, but the, it's, it's normally associated with the design and manufacture of um, clothes to a specific a client's specific measurements and requirements. So it's generally one-offs, um, and that generally couture couture garments are usually made with luxurious fabrics. So I'm keep looking at the um, oh. oh yes, it's all yes. You need to reward yourself for working so hard on scrub, Sally. <laughs> So couture garments are made from luxurious fabrics and they're usually either completely made by hand or at least finished by hand and you'd be associated with brands like Chanel and Dior um, and Yves Saint Laurent. But as I say, mostly it's garments are made by hand. So if you can sew, you can sew couture. Uh, it just takes patience and time and we have time at the moment. So I thought it'd be a good, uh, a good time to talk about couture sewing. Oh, hi, Pat. Oh, hi, Pat. Nice to see you. <laughs> um, so I've uh, I've always been inspired by couture. I've got all the books, as you can see here. I've got all the books. In fact, I've got more than this. It's just a small, my small part of my collection. I've got books by Claire Schaefer, um, Thomas Van Nordheim, Kenneth King, and the lovely Couture Embelli uh, Embellishments book here by Ellen. That's a fantastic book. Good time to read this book, actually. Um, I so, want to read it. Yeah, it's a good book. I think we should actually go through it and just make lots of samples. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. <laughs> um, but I, I, I'm always so busy, I never give myself time to actually practice couture sewing. I do bits and pieces, but I never give myself time to do whole couture garments. So a couple of years ago, I took myself off to Palm Springs uh, and I spent some time uh, with Claire Schaefer on a workshop. And for those of you who don't know Claire Schaefer, she's uh, an authority on couture and couture sewing. And she's written numerous books, as you can see here, lots of books. This is her, her main couture book as well. Um, she also writes for magazines and she's got a collection of over 2,000 couture garments, many of which uh, are Chanel. Um, and she also designs the custom couture collection for Vogue Patterns. So she's uh, she's really, you know, has a lot of knowledge about couture. 
So I had a great week in Palm Springs, which is you know, no hardship going there anyway. And um, we spent a week talking about couture and practicing couture and we made a half, half scale jacket or half a half scale jacket. So some of you who've been to the sewing room will have seen this. This is my little half jacket that we made, which has got so many techniques in it. I can tell you there's a lot, there's a lot of work that's gone into this half jacket um, here, but it was a great way to practice everything and have a good record of, of what we did. The other thing that we did during the week was we had a chance to look at uh, just a few of Claire Schaefer's collection of Chanel jackets, which was really inspiring. Every day she brought a few out and we had a look um, and looked at all the details really close up. Uh, um, Claire started collecting her jackets because she spent a lot of time um, in museums and places studying the jackets, but you can't look inside a jacket in a museum. You can't really start pulling them apart. So she started uh, collecting, um, started buying um, jackets uh, that were quite old, some of them falling apart, but it meant she got the chance to look at the construction and really study them. Mm. Uh, and that's where she learnt, put together all the techniques. You can't really go to Chanel and ask how to, <laughs> how to make a Chanel jacket. But she put together all the techniques that she saw were being done in these garments and that's where all the books come from. And a lot of the techniques that I now teach have come from things I learnt um, from looking at those jackets with Claire Schaefer or from her books. So um, it's, it was a fantastic, inspiring week. Uh, so um, that's why that's what's really uh, taken my skills a lot further forward. Uh, so just a little bit about the Chanel jacket though, in case you you know didn't want to know a bit more about it. It was um, designed by Coco Chanel in 1956, so it's, it's a quite a uh, an older design now. But it was a real um, uh, innovative design at the time. Uh, it's very simple style. It's often called a cardigan jacket because it looks a bit like a cardigan. You can just slip it on, uh, and uh, it feels like a cardigan. Very lightweight always made of really luxurious fabrics. There's always um, really interesting construction techniques though, and there are details on a, on a Chanel jacket that you, you don't see at other places and that you can always tell a real Chanel jacket by certain details. Everyone's gone really quiet. So They're everyone, listening. Everyone listening to me. Oh, that's nice. Very <laughs> interesting. <laughs> so the sort of things you would see on a, a genuine uh, haute couture jacket would be things like um, signature buttons and buttonholes. Coco Chanel would always say, never a button without a buttonhole. So I do always think, I always have that in my head when I'm putting buttons on things. Always. Always feel really guilty if I just sew a button on without a buttonhole. But we can do demi-couture sometimes. But anyway, as a, as a couture garment, you would never have a button without a buttonhole. Uh, so that would mean that the vents on the sleeves would be always be functional sleeve vents with buttons and buttonholes that would work. Uh, you'd always have really imaginative trims on the on the Chanel jacket. Sometimes they would be made from the uh, from some of the threads that, that the fabric's been woven from. You can have them crocheted or made into trims. And a, a, a Chanel jacket would have uh, very little, if any, interfacing. So it's a very lightweight garment. So to give a little bit of body, you would find that the um, the lining is quilted to the main fabric. So you can't see the quilting lines on the outside. It was, you know, it'd be invisible. It's not like when you make quilts, it's nothing, you know, in between it. It's literally just the main fabric and the lining quilted together to give a bit of body to the fabric. Uh, and because they're such light jackets, you would always have a chain in the bottom to give a bit of weight. The jacket would hang nicely. So that's that's the main things you would see in a Chanel jacket. Now, just before Christmas um, last year, I was lucky enough to purchase an Oak Couture Chanel suit, which you can see here. Mm -hmm. And I bought it from uh, Kerry Taylor Auctions. Kerry Taylor runs an auction house and they, they run auctions twice a year of beautiful oak couture garments. And it's well worth, if you get a chance, just go and have a look at the Kerry Taylor auction site because you'll see the most amazing garments by fantastic designers and right back from Regency garments, really sort of quite historical garments as well as things by Alexander McQueen, Dior, Chanel. Uh, and you can have a look at them and, and you can see the sort of prices they go for as well but it's well worth having a little look if you ever get a chance to go and view the auction that would be even even better. Uh, Kerry Taylor at the moment is uh, the auction house is closed obviously and I think uh, unfortunately Kerry's been quite ill she actually had the uh, uh, coronavirus but she's on the mend now so that's good news and she's been putting up lots of pictures of garments that will be coming on in forthcoming auctions but do have a look at Kerry Taylor. Those Vivian Westwood shoes are coming. Oh yes. The one that Naomi Campbell broke her ankle yeah. in. Vivian Westwood <laughs> shoes, Alexander, there's actually, Alexander McQueen, there's actually um, an auction coming up which has been postponed of just Alexander McQueen garments. Uh, so that's a well worth just looking, go have a look through the catalogue of the Alexander McQueen garments in that, in that auction. 
But anyway, um, <laughs> going back to my suit. Uh, mm -hmm. So I was lucky enough to buy this suit at the auction. Um, I didn't buy it to wear. It doesn't fit me. I didn't buy it to wear. I bought it because I want to have it at the uh, uh, at the sewing room for students who are booked onto the couture classes to have a look at, to have a look at the details and see what they can achieve because it's all achievable. It's just, it's hand sewing. Uh, it's all achievable. And I want to be able to go to have a look at it close up. So that's what I want to show you now. I'm going to get the jacket off the dummy. It's a jacket and a skirt, but I'm not going to take this. I'll leave the skirt on the dummy. You can see that when we'll be back at the sewing room. You can have a look at that one. I'm going to put my white gloves on. Um, now this, the reason I'm doing this is this, this jacket is, um, hi Barbara, nice to see you. I'm just going to show everyone my Chanel jacket. Um, I'm putting gloves on because this jacket was, is from 1971. So it's, uh, it's been so well preserved. It's been beautifully kept. It's a little bit flat because it's been stored in a box. Um, do I use woolen yarn? I don't know that one. I have to, I have to let me know what you mean by that, Midian. Let me know what you mean by that. <laughs> um, it's been stored in the box, so I can use, I don't know if you can still see me if I'm standing up. Uh -huh. okay. so, it, so it's a little bit flat, but I, I've kept it in the box for now because I don't want to get it out. It will be going onto a dummy. I'm going to move this glass of water right out the way. <laughs> yes, <Excuse> please do. <laughs> 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 so I don't want to put any oil from my hands onto this jacket so that's why I've got my um, white gloves on because it has been so beautifully um, preserved uh, and it's absolutely lovely it's I think it's a Linton tweed um, it's, it's a lightweight one so I think it's got a lot of silk in it so it's quite light uh, you can see the trim here it's got trim around the edges so it's like, like I said the uh, trims are always really do I need to sit down um, I can't really see you I'll now. Sit, I'll sit down. We're just well, focusing on the Chanel right yeah, now. Okay. It's, not, it's not all about me. It's not about <laughs> it's you. It's about the Chanel. <laughs> just move your mouth. Oh, yes. Um, there we go. So the, the trim here, which is around the pockets and the edges, has been made from some of the yarn that the fabric's been woven from. So that's a, a really lovely um, way to add a trim. The You can see here there's the signature buttons, beautiful buttons here and hand stitched buttonholes and all the buttonholes have been stitched by hand down the front here uh, and also like I said never a button without a buttonhole on the side here on the vents <laughs> oh perhaps if you're looking for that noise you must have thought it was her phone yes yeah, sorry, <laughs> sorry. It's on do <laughs> not always, disturb now there's always something that we forget we're always so organized and there's always, always something <laughs> So these are uh, these are functioning buttonholes, but actually these buttonholes on this jacket are um, stitched there between the trim and the fabric. So that's quite an interesting detail on that one there, um, which is really nice. Uh, the pockets are all stitched on by hand. Um, when I looked inside here, I can see all the stitching is done by hand to attach the lining and also around the edge here. One of the things I didn't mention that you often see uh, in a Chanel jacket is a three-piece sleeve. Uh, the reason for this, and you, you'll, you'll know about one-piece and two-piece sleeves, two-piece in tailoring, but in couture, particularly on a Chanel jacket, you would have a three-piece sleeve. And that would be um, a front sleeve and a back sleeve and a little strip underneath. And that is because of these very distinctive sleeve vents here. If you've done all that work, on your, on your sleeve vent and made it all beautiful like that. You don't want it sitting around the back of your sleeve, you want it on the top. So the three-piece sleeve has a seam that runs all the way down from the, from the shoulder seam straight down. So your beautiful work that you've done here will always be uh, in full view. Pat's saying her jacket doesn't look like that. <laughs> it's not far off, Pat. Your, your jacket's beautiful, especially with the four pockets, which is just like this. Pat was on last year's um, couture jacket workshop. Hi, and, Jen. Oh, hi, Jen. Nice to see you. Um, so that's the uh, the sleeve and the buttons and buttonholes here on the front of the jacket. Um, the inside of the buttonholes here is finished with a faux bound buttonhole. This is a really t lovely technique. So you just do the hand stitching through the front fabric and then you do the, um, on the inside, you finish the inside of the buttonhole with a faux bound buttonhole, which is a really love is really lovely. Often you'll find that if there's buttonholes on the sleeve, they go through both layers, the lining and the wool, but on the front, you always have the inside finished with a, with a faux bound buttonhole. 
So let me open it up so you can have a look at the inside. I thought this was lovely. The inside, the lining has been done, uh, has been made. This is a silk line that's been made to mimic the tweed, which is really lovely. So that would have been made specially to mimic the tweed there. Here you can see the Haute Couture Chanel label. This is how you, again, how you know it's a Haute Couture uh, and not a boutique version. Hi Jenny, nice to see you. And underneath this label, I don't think you'll be able to see it because it's right underneath, there's a little tape that's got the, what's called the burdock number and that's the serial number that all Haute Couture garments have. They all have a, a special serial number underneath there. And uh, I remember when we were doing the class with Claire Schaefer, she'd um, tried to find out what the special code was that Chanel used for these numbers, but she could, it's very difficult to work out because each number would be able to tell you uh, who the client was basically, but it's a very secret code. Uh, you can sort of work out the year. I think she's, worked, she's managed to work out by, she's got so many of them, she's managed to work out um, how some of the years of her jackets, but uh, apart from that, it's very difficult to, um, to work out any more details from that number but that is how you can tell it's a genuine aperture by the burdock number on the inside there uh, so you can see I don't know if you can see but there are quilting lines here where the fabric has been quilted if you can see them on the front you here, can't actually. really see. no but there are lines of stitching here where the oh, lining yeah, has been quilted to the main fabric because it's a tweed you can't see the stitching on the right side but that's uh, the quilting lines and also there are some very tiny hand-stitched darts in the lining. So when you're working with um, on a, a couture garments with this sort of fabric, you never really you never stitch a dart into the into the wool. It's always shaped by with steam. So you might stitch a dart by hand in the lining, which pulls the fabric in, and then you steam from the outside, and that's what gives the shape. You often see that. I don't know if it's got it on this one. Actually, there might be a dart on the inside. Yes, here we go. So on here, this is a little hand-stitched dart here on the lining, but there's no stitched dart on the outside. That would have just been steamed and held in place with silk organza. It's one of the techniques that I, you learn on the, um, on the Couture Jacket workshop. Pat will remember that, and Sally. Sally Scott's done this as well, or well, the shaping with, um, uh, with steam. The side seams are also stitched by hand. So there's tiny little, the lining seams are all stitched by hand. There's tiny little stitches here to hold this all by hand. And also the sleeve lining is all stitched by hand. So this is, you know, it's, it's absolutely beautiful, this jacket. Um, what else can I tell you about the inside? The, oh, this, along the bottom here, you can see the chain. Here, so the jacket is all, is, is completely finished uh, and the line is all stitched in by hand and then the chain is stitched on afterwards. And that, that can take a long time. I think everyone gets to the end of their jacket and think, oh, it's finished. And then there's another couple of hours <laughs> stitching on chain, which does take quite, quite a long time. So this is my um, beautiful Chanel jacket, which will be um, on display at the sewing room when we get back to work, <laughs> uh, along with this beautiful skirt here, which has been made to go with it. That's uh, another, another whole story, that skirt. It's absolutely beautiful. Uh, I feel very lucky to own it. It was a very exciting day, wasn't it? Was it was a very exciting arrived. day when it arrived, yes. It was a very exciting day. So we will be looking after it and uh, and it will be coming out for couture workshops when we, um, when we start back at Midhurst. I was going to just turn it over and show you the back because the back's really beautiful as well. So let me just turn it over and show you. I don't know if you can see it, but the pattern is there. It's a seam down the centre back here, uh, and Pat will remember this. We did this with Pat's jacket. So, generally, if you're buying something like a, a couture jacket like this, um, you, it's going to be something you're going to keep forever. <laughs> it's going to be something that's going to got to fit you with changing shapes and things. So the seam, seam allowances are always um, quite large seam allowances, so you can take them in or take them out. And there's generally a centre back seam here, so you can do quite a lot of fitting with this centre back seam. But the pattern's beautifully matched across the back there. Um, and it's all all uh, all goes together really beautifully, and the sleeves have all been put in by hand as well. I always put a couture sleeve in by hand; it gives you much more control. It's very rewarding. Oh, <laughs> Suzanne's saying I've got it insured. Well, it's at the moment it's a hits here, so it's insured here. But I need to get it if I take it to Midhurst; it'll be separately insured, <laughs> definitely. Yes. Um, 
and Julie's saying her favourite colour is. It's beautiful, isn't it? Really lovely spring colours. So it's it's really beautiful. Not a traditional um, Chanel jacket shape because it has it's got the slightly different neckline, but everything else. These pockets on the front here. Let me just lay that flat again. The pockets you can see that they're they're coming up a bit here. Well, generally when you put a pocket onto a, a, a couture jacket, they're supposed they're supposed to bag forward slightly, and I think this is just where it's been kept in a box. It's been pressed a little bit flat, so. I will be hanging it. Now I'm saying Chanel's her favourite. I think Chanel's my favourite. I always look at all the runway shows, but the Chanel one is always the one that I look for. And uh, I love looking for the Linton tweed being used in different ways and being really innovative with the with the Linton. Um, it's it's great. You can see how the pattern matches across the pockets and everything. Here. But yeah, the, these pockets at the moment they're coming up like this. But I think that so that's just where it's been it's been stored in a box. Uh, so really, the pockets should sort of go down a little bit but it's all a bit flat because it's been stored but it's going to carry on being stored at the moment until we have somewhere nice to um, display it so you can all look at it but it is it's, it's really inspiring to look at but all of these techniques are achievable all of them you can you can make a jacket like this you just have to have time I think we worked out um, about 130 hours did we look at 130 uh, and that's if you're not doing that is if you're not doing hand stitch buttonholes I mean I think 100 hours uh, is would just be on hand stitch buttonholes and uh, it's worth actually while we're all at home we should be doing one hand stitch buttonhole a day shouldn't we and try and improve our our hand stitch buttonholes so that's my Chanel jacket if you have any questions oh <laughs> thank you Linda oh that's very kind <laughs> Linda <laughs> Linda saying I could give Chanel a run for her money <laughs> well we do like to we do like to finish our garments beautifully I have to say I like my garments to look as one, another, another Chanelism, uh, garments should look as beautiful from the inside as they do from the outside. So it's always worth thinking about that when you're making. Well, thank you very much, Linda. That's very, very nice thing to say. Um, but like I say, it's, it's all achievable. It's just practice and having time to do it. So I'm going to put this back on the stand because I did promise you um, a little demonstration of some of the techniques that are used in something like this that you could put into um, into your own your own projects. You you don't have to use all couture techniques uh, in your projects. You could just use bits and pieces unless you want to do a whole jacket like this and use all couture techniques which is it's a nice project it's a really lovely project so I'm going to put this back on the dummy um, and I think Amy might be going to be doing some fancy repositioning of the camera because <laughs> <laughs> I want to show you some hand stitches um, while we're doing this okay it might go wobbly guys so yeah. please bear with <laughs> <laughs> bear with <laughs> with <laughs> when I said I wanted to do hand stitches a te technique I was like oh okay <laughs> thanks mum <laughs> oh now Jen's asking about the pile of books on the table here I did mention them um, but these are my favorite couture books there are so many but I've got um, I will just got run through them all I've got the the Claire Schaefer collection which is there's a couture jacket um, a couture skirt there's a tailoring one uh, there's the the um, making designer trims which is fantastic uh, and there is the, that's the that's the uh, Claire Schaefer couture techniques which is for all couture sewing which is a really good book I've got Thomas van Nordheim's vintage couture sewing which is fantastic for um, that's uh, lots of traditional tailoring techniques as well as the couture techniques this is um, Kenneth King's uh, cool tricks um, culture one which is a really a really got lots of lovely ideas in it and then this one i'm just going to show you this one completely because it is a beautiful book bring it in here because i don't move that over there and bring this here this is uh, creating uh, couture embellishments by um, Ellen Miller and uh, Ellen I met Ellen a couple of years ago when we were at a conference and she's such a lovely lady she's a she's a tu tutor at a uh, um, a university and she was teaching couture techniques and she Boston. was asked was it, it was Boston, Boston wasn't it yeah and she was asked to to do a book um, on couture embellishments she said okay and it took her 10 years to do this book uh, and it is absolutely beautiful so while you've got some time this could be a good book to have a look at oh, it, I has got, read it, so bad. it has got every single type of embellishment you would like from making fringes trims working with feathers lace uh, it is a fantastic book. Making your own gimp braids, 
yeah it's a great book <laughs> it's uh <laughs> Jane wants to know if you have to do hand stitch buttonholes on scrubs. <laughs> well, if you're making couture scrubs, I think you should, Jane. But uh, no, you don't have to do couture buttonholes. On Jane the scrubs. Uh, says this is like that program about the secrets of the V&A. Oh yes, it is. <laughs> that's a very good program. If you've seen that, that's a great, uh, that's a great program actually. You can probably still get it on BBC iPlayer, which is all about the behind the scenes of the exhibitions at the V&A. And uh, I think my favourite ones was about the Dior dresses that they brought in and. Uh, made ready for exhibition. Suzanne wants to see that fabric that we've got piled up over there. Oh, I might show you that in a minute, Suzanne. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you that in a minute. Um, let, me do, let me do a little demo. Let me do a little demo. So, as I mentioned, all of the um, techniques that you on the couture jacket are all achievable, just takes practice and time. But there are two particular... Oh, sorry. <laughs> there are two hand stitches which um, I use a lot in couture sewing. One is a herringbone stitch and one is a, a fell stitch and you, you may well know these um jen's saying oh jen's got the couture techniques book um by claire schaefer that is a very good book can we it's... oh yes i will post a book list jen yeah absolutely mm, i'll post yeah, it on we'll the midhurst servers group mm. good plan yeah these are my favorites um and these when you come to midhurst i have a library of all my books so you can always have a look at and you can always borrow them but it is nice to have them i don't you love having books i love having sewing books it's almost as bad as having sewing patterns and fabric it's another hobby oh jilly itself. could we mention the names of the magazines again oh the magazines let me just bring those forward there's the makers atelier magazine which you can get from the makers atelier website that's a, a fantastic um fantastic magazine I, and I, I know i write for it and i'm a bit biased but it is a really good magazine and the other one and you get a free pattern with that one um and the other one is uh so today those are my two favourites magazines. There are lots out there, really good, but they, you know, and you can buy other ones. Uh, threads. From Smith. Oh yeah, Threads. I really like Threads magazine, which is the American one, uh, which is great as well. But these are the two that I really like. Okay. Right. So hand stitching, two stitches that we use a lot. This, um, this is a, a sample front of a jacket. So you can see that it's already been machine quilted and everything. We did this, I did a couture sewing retreat last year. Gosh, that seems a long time ago, doesn't it? We did a couture sewing retreat up in uh, Carlisle last year where we took over a hotel and we did lots of couture samples. It was great and we went to Linton Tweeds. That was, a, that was great fun. And, and everybody on the retreat got to make a little jacket front as well as lots of other samples. Um, but the two stitches that I use the most when I am... Um, uh, couture sewing are a herringbone stitch and a fell stitch. Now the herringbone stitch is uh, like a little cross stitch, a spread out cross stitch and I would use this, I'm just going to just pin this out of the way and I would use this to secure the hem. When I'm turning a hem up I would um, use this to just hold the hem up so it's not too much, too, a too tight a stitch, it's not going to stop movement but it just um, holds the hem up so that it's all held in place, ready for your you to stitch your lining in place. I'm going to use red thread, but obviously you would use a matching thread for this because it's a permanent stitch, it's going to stay in. When you do a permanent stitch like this, you would always wax your thread. So you run your thread through a piece of beeswax. This is my ancient piece of beeswax, but you can get nice pieces. <laughs> And then once you've waxed your thread, you then put it between, put your thread between a piece of kitchen roll like this, put the iron on top and then just run your thread through. And that takes off the excess wax. And what that does is it just strengthens your thread. It um, makes it smoother and it stops it twisting and knotting. So you'll find that it's well worth spending that bit of time waxing and pressing your thread before you um, start doing your hand stitching. And I often do thread up several needles with waxed pressed thread and put them into my needle keeper, which I've mentioned a few times, haven't I, in this, these, these slides. Um, now, I've what I've done with this bottom of this, I've put in a piece of interfacing, which you would do on any garment. You know, it doesn't have to be a couture garment. When you're making a blazer, we use interfaced hems. Um, in the couture garments, we use a product called Wigan, which is a sewing interfacing. Uh, it's a, 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 on the cut on the bias. And that just goes into the hems and then you I've turned this up and tacked it in place and then I'm going to permanently hold it in place using a herringbone stitch. Herringbone goes from left to right 
and you just do a little back stitch onto your interfacing and a back stitch onto your fabric. So nothing's going to show on the right side. You're just catching the fabric. Pat wants a needle keeper. Now they're on the website, Pat. We're still sending out orders. So anyone who wants any bits of haberdashery that you see on our lives or on the videos that we've been doing, you can get all of the um, bits and pieces. So I don't know if you can see. Mm -hmm. Oh, well done, Amy's doing very fancy work here today. So you would do a herringbone stitch all the way along. And I use this for um, attaching tape to a garment, um, turn, uh, holding up hems. And it's just a little back stitch that holds everything in place. But, and using your waxed and pressed thread. So a really useful stitch. We use this uh, all the time in our couture sewing. So that's the... Um, oh look, I've got carried away now. I don't need to go all the way along really. <laughs> it's quite like doing it. I love a bit of hand sewing. <laughs> so that's the that's the herringbone stitch there. Like a little backwards uh, cross stitch. I think in America it's called catch stitch. I remember when I was doing the class with um, with Claire Schaefer, I was the only English person. There was another lady, Celia was there helping as well. Um, but uh, I was doing the class and she said, for you English ladies, it's herringbone, but it's catch stitch. So if you're reading Claire Schaefer's books and she says catch stitch, what she means is herringbone. So once you've um, done your, uh, held your hems up in place with your herringbone stitch, you then bring the lining down Suzanne says nice nails. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm keeping them going. <laughs> the gel nail kit was very successful, oh, yes. everybody, from yes. last week. We when did. We were that was, about yeah, that. that's our little job last week, wasn't it? <laughs> we did a nail. We did a gel nail kit. <laughs> that's, I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, it's close up on my nails now. Okay, so the other stitch that I use, so once I've done the herringbone all the way round to hold the edges in place. Uh, I then pin and fold back the edge of the lining and pin and tack it in place. I mean, you can just pin it, but I always think that when you're hand stitching, pins just get in the way and they get tangled on your thread. So um, it's well worth uh, tacking just to get those pins out of the way. And try, if you can, to do your hand sewing on a table. I know it's really nice to sit and hand sew. Sometimes you can sit on the sofa and hand stitch, but often it's really nice to sit at the table and have it all laid out nice and flat. So. To hold this, the fell stitch that I'm going to show you now, again, you may know this by a different name, but I use the fell stitch um, for neatening all around the edge of the jackets. I always do it, um, I just did it on our blazers. We uh, uh, fell stitched, didn't we, all around the edge mm -hmm. of our jackets with a fell stitch. I'm not a big fan of bagged linings where you machine stitch the lining in and then put it all through a little, little hole in the sleeve seam. I'm not a fan of that. Um, I like to do a hand stitch lining. You can do part of it by machine. Uh, in the hem ironed on the fabric. Uh, no, that, that that interfacing that's in the bottom there, when you're doing couture, you use um, sewing interfacings. So on the blazer last week, which was speed tailored, we used fusible interfacings, uh, but on the couture, this is a sewing interfacing. So that underneath this hem here, the edge of the wigan, this, this interfacing, is herringbone to the jacket. And then you turn the hem up and you, wig, you herringbone the hem to the wigan so it's uh, lots of lots of hand stitches in, the, in this sort of jacket but yeah for this one that's that's a, a sewing interfacing but you can do speed tailoring like i said which is used with fusibles as well if you're using a fusible in your hem um cut it on the bias use a woven fusible interfacing and cut it on the bias so cut yourself bias strips the width of your hem so I'm using this fell stitch. Can you see this colour thread? Is that okay? Do you want me to go back to the red? Um, red might be better. I've still got plenty of red, so I'll go you back. You can see it, but red will be better. I'll go back to the red. I just did it in case I ran out of red. Okay. So this stitch, this fell stitch, I use this when I'm hand stitching the uh, lining down the side of a zip. So... Start off with a double stitch or not, so you start at the top. I'm just showing you this as a so you start right on the edge of the fabric and then you go down and go along underneath the fabric, so nothing's showing on the right side. And I go along about I go along about half a centimeter, quarter of an inch, and come up right on the fold and then go straight back down 
and come up right on the fold yeah. and straight back down go along about half a centimeter and come up on the fold so in a matching thread these stitches wouldn't show and it's quite addictive <laughs> so addictive I could just sit here and it's my favorite stitch. <laughs> I love this stitch it's very mm. mindful it is if it's all pinned and tacked in I mean we did actually sit on the sofa and do our bell stitching didn't we because everything mm -hmm. was pinned and tacked so when I'm doing small pieces I did it with a glass of wine oh, yes you did <laughs> and they were still very nice straight stitches as well. <laughs> thanks there we go so that's a fell stitch so those are two stitches that we're using couture that I would I use all the time in my everyday dressmaking the other stitch that we use a lot would be a back stitch like when I'm putting the sleeves in by hand I would use a little back stitch and we use a running stitch which is just like a small a small tacking stitch um, so there's lots of different hand stitches that we use in couture <laughs> Jen says tipsy sewing is my favourite. Me too, Jen. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Maybe I'll do a tipsy sew along. <laughs> you can do the, the <laughs> that could be interesting. The sensible ones. So that's the fell stitch, and that's the stitch that I, I do on the edges of my couture jackets. But like I said, on my speed tailor jackets, uh, when I when I'm putting um, zips in, uh, hand sewing the lining to zips, um, it's a really nice, useful stitch. So that's my demo. Mm -hmm. It's the quilt stitch, the herringbone stitch. No, the quilting. Oh, the machine, the machine quilting here. Yes, that's done. Not on a loose attention, but I do a bigger stitch. Um, I just do a, a either three and a half or four um, stitch length, depending on the thickness of your tweed, because you can see you can see there on the inside the quilting stitches, but you can't see them on the outside. You can see all my diagonal tacking there, all my construction lines. That I use. Um, so yes, those those are just it's the same tension but just a longer stitch. The longer the thicker your fabric, the longer your stitch should be. And you need different colour thread on the lining. Um, so this be I would have stitched this from the right side. So I'd have the top thread to match the right side of the fabric and then the bobbin thread to match the uh, underneath fabric. So so that's a few tips on couture sewing. Um, but I'm sure you're wondering why I'm telling you all this couture sewing today. Amy's going to move the camera back. Bear with everybody. <laughs> and obviously she's standing in front of my notes, so I can't. Uh, I've forgotten where I am now. Sorry. Oh yeah, I couldn't get it out of the tripod. Sorry for that <laughs> random noise I just made. <laughs> so couture sewing. So like I mentioned, um, I don't. I haven't had much time to make. I do a lot of couture sewing as, as complete garments. This is my, actually this is my couture jacket. This is actually the Makers Atelier swing jacket, which I made using all couture techniques. So you don't have to use the uh, classic classic patterns for couture techniques. This is the Makers Atelier swing jacket. Uh, it's made in a Linton tweed. Now, this was a particularly tricky fabric to use. It's got bits of plastic and metallic in it, like a lot of Lintons do, and it frayed like crazy. But anyway, make, that worked it all out. Uh, it's uh, got a, um, Crepe de Chine lining and it's got the quilt, you see the quilting there, uh, all the little quilt lines there and hand fell stitched around the edges and it's got a chain in the bottom as well. So you can see uh, this is uh, all couture techniques uh, in a fairly simple pattern. But I haven't got a classic Chanel style jacket so I thought this would be a good time for me to make one. Um, I've got lots of fabric as Suzanne may have noticed on the on the side here, let me just pick up my stash. Um, one of the things that we did when we were on the Couture retreat last year, we had a well two visits to Linton Tweeds. <laughs> I think they <laughs> may have been happy to see us. They were quite happy to see. I'm sure they were quite happy to see us. Yeah, we did. Um, I think on, on one day, um, certain people did. Certain people um, <laughs> may have just wrecked their displays and <laughs> take sport all their fabrics so they had to restock the next day. Um, but we had yeah we had a lovely time. We had a tour of the we had a tour of the mill and it was yeah it was fantastic. But of course, you know, you can't leave uh, Linton without some fabric and they have these amazing offers where you get, you know, two skirt lengths for um, 
the price of one and things like that. So I came home with several, again, not had time to make it up yet. Uh, so when I thought I would like to make myself a uh, Chanel jacket, I got all my linter out and I didn't have enough. Well, <laughs> I've, Disaster. Got, no, I've got lots of skirt lengths, but I didn't have a jacket length. So luckily, uh, Victoria from Bloomsbury Square Fabrics <laughs> has, uh, she's got lots of Linton. Linton tweeds aren't, aren't sending out at the moment, but Victoria is. And she has quite a few Linton tweeds on the website. So um, if you're looking for Linton, that's a place to go. So Victoria brought me around this lovely length of um, Linton here uh, in uh, pale cream colors. <laughs> Jane, I knew you'd comment, Jane. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Jane may have visited once or twice. Uh, so this is a, a beautiful Linton tweed here, and she also brought me round, dropped it on my doorstep, uh, some crepe de chine for the lining. So I'm going to make the um, a Chanel jacket, Chanel style jacket. I'm going to use this pattern, the uh, Claire Schaefer Custom Couture Collection, the classic Chanel jacket, and I'm going to film it for a new online workshop. So the idea is that I'm going to do one film a week. So you can sign up now on the website if you want, if you fancy making a couture jacket, and um, you can sign up now and there'll be a new video uh, sent out every week with all the techniques to um, make yourself a couture jacket. Um, I'm quite excited because uh, I do lots of bits and pieces and lots of samples and add couture techniques to lots of different garments. But um, yeah, I haven't made one of these for a long time. In fact, my last one wasn't completely couture. It was, uh, it was only half. So this is going to be a completely couture made um, couture, uh, a Chanel jacket in these lovely fabrics. And then I'll have to buy some more to make a matching skirt because I haven't got any. <laughs> so uh, that's the plan. Uh, I hope some of you will join me on this uh, Chanel jacket journey. It, the, web, the workshop is available on the website now and like I said the first video will come out probably on Friday just to give me a chance to uh, get it all set up and, and properly done and then every week if you sign up you'll get a new video. I mean you could just collect them all and make it another time but I did think uh, uh, oh Pat might have another gown. I think you should have another gown Pat. Your jacket is great. I loved it. It was beautiful. Beautiful lining. Um, yeah it's great. Uh, no it's not uh, no it's not time limited my classes aren't time limited uh, so you once you've got them you've got them and you can uh, you can have a go and take as long as you like uh, making your Chanel jacket uh, and Barbara's keen as well because it's one of the classes I do at Midhurst I do, I do it once a year uh, and I've only got really got space for six on my online on my classes at Midhurst so it often we sells often out. squeeze in a seventh yeah sometimes we squeeze, squeeze in a seventh and then Amy squeezed in as well last year as well um, but yeah we often um it often sells out. I think it's, in fact, I think this year's has only got one space left on it. So I thought it'd be a good opportunity to share the skills and you can have a go uh, while we've got time to, to do lots of hand sewing. Um, so that's and Barbara uh, and Susan Castle. Yeah, so. practice all your hand sewing techniques. Oh, that's great. That's good. So I'm glad you like the idea of that. I certainly like the idea of doing that. I'm very excited. Um, so as I mentioned, Amy made a, Amy was making a jacket last year. Where are you, Amy? <laughs> Maybe. I'm going to make space that Amy can come in because, um, uh, on last year's workshop, um, Pat will remember because she was there, Amy started making her Chanel jacket. So she's going to come and show you her jacket now. I'm going to my bits. I, think I mean, my it's following a theme from last week. Uh, it is actually, isn't it? Yeah. But it is still uh, sleeveless. <laughs> it still hasn't got any sleeves in it. <laughs> I have yet another sleeveless jacket. This is my <laughs> couture jacket. Um, <laughs> great job. <laughs> yeah. It's only needing the sleeves now, so my goal is now, whilst Mum's doing the class, I'll mm. finish it. Mm. I just haven't had time. Um, so yeah, it's all. This fabric is from. I'll sit down. Uh, Mood Fabrics in New York, which I bought about three years what, ago three years, yeah. when we were on that trip. And that's got silk in it, hasn't it? Um, it's, it's yes. This is actually. I think it was a uh, Mark Jacobs fabric or something they have a lot of ex designer fabrics in mood for really good prices so um yes yeah, this sort of boot clay wool silk and then i've got silk charmeuse um lining Isn't also lovely? from mood um so yes i just wanted i've been i mean ahhing of whether to trim i really wanted to make mm. trim um but it just didn't work i bought all sorts of things and i? I mm -hmm. went to vivi rulo uh, just before christmas and bought some velvet ribbon in one of the turquoises and nothing no, looks right i think it just deserves to be plain mm. so once it's got sleeves in this is pretty much going to be it i'm not gonna 
embellish it. James mentioned, uh, Jen snapped in your pattern matching. Oh, thank That's, you. Actually, that is what took the time with this jacket yeah. because the All pattern the matching. Um, uh, <laughs> it's great, it's a waistcoat. Yeah. I could just finish it like this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I've even cut out the sleeves. No, yeah. because you've got to pattern match those. Anyway. I've got to pattern match the sleeves. Yeah. So the pattern matching was a real challenge, and I actually didn't quite have enough fabric. Mm. So um, on my sleeves, I'm going to have to do an invisible join um, at some point. We did that with Pat's yeah, jacket actually, and it worked really well, well didn't it? Pattern matching there. Yeah, and there's a, there's a centre back seam there. There is a centre back yeah, seam centre -back right seam. there. Yeah, so you see, it looks exactly the same as the one on the front. Oh, oh thanks, <laughs> thanks, Mum. Um, Marilyn's saying it's really lovely. It's beautiful, and it's only going to finish her jacket along with me making. So, like when we were doing the blazer workshops, we were both making blazers. But just to prove that I do actually finish this, <laughs> <laughs> this is my blazer. There we go. The only thing it's missing is a button because I didn't have. The right one so i've done the buttonhole um and i also did a little buttonhole there yeah. and top stitching and the sleeves are in now it's great and there's its Beautiful jazzy lining. lining so yeah this was made uh it's the jessica closet case jessica blazer mm. uh fabric is um linen from bloomsbury square mm -hmm. Uh, the lining I got on Goldfork Road, I think it was. Yeah, like the... and it was very so... fine. It's a very fine lining, so Amy had to uh, do a fusible interfacing on the lining, didn't you? Um... Kate's asking if the silk charmeuse is available in the UK. Um, I think we saw it on Goldfork Road. Goldfork Road, I've seen yeah, it. Yeah, I don't think Victoria's got silk charmeuse, has she? Not charmeuse. She's got some silk satin. Yeah. Yeah, but charmeuse is just a bit finer. Mm. Yeah, but you can use silk satin. Yeah. Silk satin works just as well. And we did. Yeah, I got some on Goldfork Road. Yeah, Sally. Sally. Yeah. <laughs> Sally's doing very well with her jacket. I'm getting there. Yeah, she's doing really well. Gradually finishing things off. She lost the lining. <laughs> Suzanne lost the lining. Yeah, well, this lining actually, um, you might be able to see better with it off. It was a gigantic print. I, had, I bought this silk just because I thought it was beautiful and then realised it's so thin and it had such a big palm leaf print and it was, I was never going to wear it. So <laughs> it's served me much better as a lining. It looks nice with the sleeves turned back as well. Yeah. And that looks really lovely. So yeah, I'm very happy with my blazer. I just need to find a button now. Yes. <laughs> that's the next trip. I'm being a bit picky about the button. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so what else have we been up to this week? Um, this we've week we things. have been making scrubs. Scrubs has been the order of week of the week this that week. Um, nice. We yeah. um, have posted a video onto YouTube yesterday mm -hmm. of how to make scrubs for the NHS so if you haven't seen it already I think it's coming up to about 200 views already yeah, it's been very popular it's very popular yeah. and yeah. Uh, there is also a how to make a scrubs laundry bag so that they can wash their scrubs um, mm. and a little, a, overlocker. Overlocker. There's a little overlocker there's mm. a little overlocker tutorial as well of how to turn a corner or go around a curve on an overlocker so they are all on YouTube now yeah. and yeah that's what we've been up to this so week. Linda's, oh, Linda, the, the, uh, you can sign up for the Chanel course on the website, claire-tyler.com, under the online classes. It's up there already. So you can sign up for that today. Uh, and then the first video will come out on Friday. So we're still filming that one. But you're welcome to sign up uh, and then you'll get the video as soon as it comes out. And then you'll get your also, list of yeah, what you need. There's a materials list on the on the page, actually. I've done it already. Oh, OK. Oh, well. Very organised. Very organised. <laughs> uh, so there's a list of all the materials you need. So it gives you a few days to get all your materials together uh, and your patterns and things like that. Uh, but like I say, Victoria has got some lovely Lintons and they're a very good price, actually, on Bridgery Square. They are. They have been uh, lowered in price yes. recently. So all Linton is £35 a metre currently. Mm. Bargain. On Bloomsbury Square. Mm. Um, Kate says that she bought silk habitat in Goldhawk. It will silk habitat is a bit finer than mm. charmeuse, yeah. But then yeah. you could block interface it. Yeah, that's what we did with Amy's jacket. Yeah, my mm. silk in that blazer was habitat weight, and yeah. it was so fine. So I block interfaced it with yeah. a really nice. Yeah, I've got a very fine interfacing called it's called ultra fine, uh, and it's 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 a really fine interface, fusible interfacing, which is perfect for interfacing silk. So that's on the website as well. Um, uh, Jen shared the scrubs video in oh, America you, and Australia. Wow, yes, we're going international. <laughs> we are. <laughs> so did Leanne. Oh, that's great. Leanne's out in Washington, so that's great. Thank you very much. I hope she's okay out there. Um, uh, Claire says she's got scrubs on order for my daughter's. Well, the patterns unisex. Yeah, our patterns. Yeah. What patterns we're using is unisex. Yeah, it's just a unisex one. It works really well. Um, oh, yeah, uh, Marilyn, yeah, Marilyn. join in. <laughs> you can be a complete beginner. I was definitely not mm. 
a skilled sewer when I decided I wanted to do the couture jacket mm. last year, my skills have improved massively since. And yes. like mum teaching those little, that little demo, I now use the couture techniques in my everyday yeah. sewing because I love it. So exactly. I think, yeah, you don't have to be mm. super advanced. I think as a beginner, um, you might find the online class easier because there is a, when you're doing a class at Midhurst and we have, it's a five, it's a four day, but I often put an extra fifth day in uh, at Midhurst, but you do feel that um, we do one day and then a couple of weeks to do work at home and you come back and do a bit more, but there's that pressure all the time to sort of keep up. So, um, whereas with the online class, you can work at your own pace. So mm. hopefully that'll be helpful as well. So yeah. Maybe I'll catch up and then I can do one as well. Do another one. Do another one. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> I want to do one with a zip. I've yeah. got, I really want to do a black, plain black tweed with an mm. exposed metal zip. That's my next. Yeah, I did. Uh, I did one. My, my first one I was going to do. I did the twelve. It was a biker jacket. Actually, I got the twelve. Jane made a gorgeous. Mm. This black biker jacket. Yeah, the red it was one. actually. Yes. Could you? Yeah, you'll see that on the. Um, I think it's on the Claire Threads page. Uh, under the dressmaker's portfolio. Yeah, some people want to couture everything. Yeah. Not just the cardigan yeah. style, you can make, make anything. anything out of Linton Tweed. I've got to make all these skirts up. <laughs> <laughs> I need to finish my skirt. Oh, yes. Another uh, yeah. UFO. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're going to do some more um, YouTube videos this week, aren't we? Think we are. As well as the couture jacket. Yeah, we haven't it. decided what yet. They kind of come up as whatever project we're working mm. on, then we can think of, oh, we could do that as a little. Yeah. Freebie to go on the I know, but we've still got page. our list over there. We do. That's growing. But do let us know what you'd like to see as well. It's always nice to know what sort of techniques you'd like to learn, um, and what sort of things you'd like to see. Uh, there we go. See, Marilyn loves Chanel. I love Chanel. Do have a look, actually, if you are a Chanel fan and you don't already, go up to the, yeah, go to the Chanel, the Chanel um, website, or on the Chanel, I've got a Facebook page, uh, and... Uh, um, well, pockets. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we might do that. Yeah, but Chanel have a Facebook page, and every time there's a new um, uh, collection, a new runway show, uh, you can watch that. But if you go to their website or their YouTube channel, actually, Chanel have got a YouTube channel. I remember Sue Cotton and I, we were very sad, one New Year's Day, <laughs> we sat and watched all the Chanel runway shows because they are so stunning that, you know, the sets that they build. Especially the Carl Lagerfeld ones. Yeah. Before Carl Lagerfeld died, his yes. shows were just. Amazing, fantastic really the beautiful. They, they built the sets. And so Sally's asking for a welt pocket video. Okay, we'll do a welt pocket, <laughs> a welt pocket video, Sally. Oh, Claire is saying, could you put the two pinks together in one jacket? Well, I could. If I was doing, yes, if I was going a bit more avant-garde, I could do. Yes, the, this one's a, a plain pink. It's a slightly different tone, actually. It has got that pink. Similar. It actually. does have it in it. In the way that Linton work, they always make a base cloth mm. in all the different colours that they're using that season. So there'll always be a plain one, like the pink, mm. and then they use that yarn into about six or seven different prints. Yeah. So you have always have a plain to go with all these different prints. So it would go together. Yeah. Or maybe I could make a sleeveless one. <laughs> I can give you advice on the sleeveless <laughs> one if you like. <laughs> Uh, Suzanne's asking about a class on winter coats making. That is on my list mm. actually because, as I said, all the all the classes that I currently teach at Midhurst, I think it'd be really nice to have a, an online version as well. So if you can't get to Midhurst to do a class, there's always that option as well. So um, it's on my list, uh, Suzanne, to do a winter coat. Um, but we're doing quite a few. Let's big do that. Projects. I've got a really good pattern and fabric oh, yeah. that I've been trying to make for about four <laughs> years. <laughs> so it'd be great yeah, if you did do that. that. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> that's next. Yeah. We could do that. <laughs> as well as the couture jacket yeah we're just gonna do loads of jackets and yeah. coats yeah. it's all out of so i had a request for a dress actually from jamie to do a um a linen dress so mm -hmm. we do i do actually need some linen dresses i've got my little black dress on today um so that's uh, uh but that's that's quite a good workshop that we do as well a little black dress so yeah we'll um, we'll have a think about that but yeah any suggestions uh we're always happy to take them on board and add them to our whiteboard it's been a bit neglected <laughs> the whiteboard it's currently a yeah no, it's taken with scrubs though hasn't it, it has, has yeah we got make, yeah, we've a bit made. overtaken we felt that yeah. that needed to take priority really um but i think we've almost completed our order the dream team are yeah. busy making their scrubs as well mm -hmm. so thank you dream team yeah thank you dream team they're all doing a great job so uh yes yeah, so i've still got a big pile of fabric in the hall though to wash more scrubs more scrubs <laughs> it's good to we're help. quite quick at it now we cut out five the other on friday yeah 
And we finished them. Mm. We were just like a production line. Yeah. So. <laughs> with laundry bags. Yeah. We're and then the thank you labels. I was doing Although the stuff. fabric turned our hands blue. So we <laughs> had blue hands for a couple of days. Put another hot wash to get rid yeah. of <laughs> Right. What were Jen like? Uh, Lots of online classes. Oh, okay. You're going to move back to Scotland. Oh, yeah, Jen. We haven't seen... <coughs> excuse me. I'm losing my voice. Um, we haven't seen Jen for, for ages. And uh, yeah, moving back to Scotland, it'll be good... Um, uh, if we do more online classes, you can still keep in touch. And Marilyn said Makes Atelier. So there's already the Makes Atelier Raw Edge Coat on the website. And the Blazer Workshop is one of the blazers I make on the Blazer Workshop is the Makes Atelier Blazer. Um, so that's the one of the patterns I run through, as well as the Nina Lee and the uh, Closet Case one. So, But we will do more because I do I love working with the Makes Atelier patterns. This, like I say, this is the swing jacket. So I've got several versions of this in different fabrics. So look, we've been we've been chatting for an hour again. Ooh. That hour goes by so quickly. <laughs> it <does>. <laughs> it's <laughs> been really lovely. I've been loved looking at all your comments and and uh, finding out what you're all up to. So do keep in touch. Um, we're gonna we'll do another one next week. Yeah, we will. Um, maybe don't we'll know you. what the theme is. Yeah. No, but I'll probably show you my progress on the Chanel jacket just so you can see it. And Amy will have another sleeveless. Another I'm sleeveless sure I'll have another sleeveless garment <laughs> to show you. It might. It will still be the couture jacket because I'm not going to get the sleeves in no. before next right. week. You need to wait for me to get to that stage in the video. Oh, it'll ta oh, it'll take me so long. <laughs> I'll just <laughs> I'll do a little bit every day. Mm. <laughs> um, mm. Yes. Mm. Oh, Andre's patterns. Yeah, Jen. Um, uh, Jen's mentioned Andre. Andre does um, the John Lewis until the sun goes down, and she does all vintage patterns, which are lovely, and they are. Um, like tea dresses and beautiful vintage uh, uh, tops and she um, does her own fabric designs as well and often they're on fine fabrics like crepe de chine so they're they're quite good fun to work with quite tricky so that would be a good workshop to do and we've yeah, both, well, I've made several dresses from um, I've got some till the sun fabric. goes down patterns yeah uh, Jen really enjoyed the blazer workshop thank you Je um, Jane Jane uh, made the same one as you didn't she the she did the Jessica one. Uh, Marilyn says we're both stars. Oh, thank you, Marilyn. <laughs> and Julie says replicating favourite. Oh, copy make it. Yes, copy it make that it. That would I be do, a really yeah. good online class. One of my very popular classes uh, at, um, uh, at Midhurst is copy it make it, where you can bring your garment along and uh, and you can uh, copy it. So uh, maybe we'll do That's a, a good online workshop. That's workshop. a good one, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I know Jane loves that one. <laughs> <laughs> Sally has got some fabric until, until the, the sun goes down it's so lovely really lovely quality fabrics yeah so yeah so i think that's uh you're very welcome jen it's been lovely to catch up with everybody today um it's been really fun isn't it yeah. it's always fun we just yeah. like couture things in linton so it's just yeah. nice having just, all the linton yeah, everywhere we just got it all out. and being in the presence of chanel is quite special yes it is i might <laughs> have to leave this out now i think you should yeah it's, it's so nice. pretty yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much for watching today amy's got one of Oh yeah. <laughs> I always forget that like bit. <laughs> yeah. Bye everyone. Oh, Jen says copy make it one of her favourites as well. So she never gets sick of doing it. It's a very good class. It's good fun. So I love doing it. I miss her so I miss you all. I really miss you all and I really hope that you know we can all get together very soon. But in the meantime, keep sewing and keep in touch and join us joining us on Saturday. So I'm sure we'll have something uh, to show you again next week. But in the meantime, have a great week. Um, and uh, we'll see you all next week, but keep in touch. Bye. Bye.